let's just so whatever. Oh, still not used to it. Uh, anyway, hello you guys. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Lauren. I like to sew and I like cats. And this is basically a picture of my spirit. Um, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make the Louise barrel bag by Swoon. Um, I remember when this pattern was first released and I was like, I have to make that. I love it. Um, so I've made maybe five or six of these bags and I've done some modifications to some that I really enjoyed. Um, I'm going to tell you how I interface this bag first. So I used cotton woven fabric. I interfaced it with woven fuse, Decaville light, and then foam. I cut the Decaville light to the same size as the foam just to give it that extra stiffness. Um, I used vinyl and waterproof canvas. So I did not use any fleece for this side, but if you wanted a little more stiffness on the side panels, you could add Decaville light just to make sure you trim it down out of the seam allowance. Um, instead of using these strap connectors, I used these strap anchors that I sell through my website and I really like how it turned out. Um, I think it looks really good. We've got purse feet added here. One thing that I would say you could change is um, using a double sided zipper would be really, really neat. And then it would close kind of in the center. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with double sided zippers lately. I just am. Um, I did not do that with this bag, but it has this neat little flap that is kind of like an extra security feature. It covers the zipper. Um, that's pretty neat. So inside I added a slip pocket and a zippered pocket. Um, and yeah, it was really fun. One thing, maybe I already said this, I don't know. I'm trying not to get too ranty in my intros. Um, a way that I've modified this bag is I went ahead and added like two inches to the height of the bag. So down here added instead of up here. And then I didn't add a zipper to the top. I just added a recessed zipper. Um, so it doesn't go across the top completely. And then I added my strap connectors up a little higher. So when I did that, it kind of gave it a shape more like this. And then the recessed zipper closed it here. So it had still kind of the same amount of security um, but kind of just made it a little classier than vintage. So there's the inside of the bag. There's the side panels. Um, you are supposed to either rivet or stitch that in. And I just, I didn't really want to. Uh, and that's that. You can't make me, you're not my real dad. Uh, so this zipper panel here has snaps that close down, snap into place. Uh, I am actually going to, I'll try to do it live either here or in a Facebook group, um, making a custom order. The girl designed the fabric and I just had like these fun ideas for adding accents along the bottom and then instead of anchors or the connectors that come with the pattern, just using like long, to make it almost look like a, a old trunk or something. I'm really excited about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're new here, make sure you're subscribed. We're almost at 10,000 and my mind is blown. Uh, so if you aren't new here, thank you so much for continuing to subscribe, like, comment, or leave. That's fine too. You gotta do what you gotta do, I understand. Um, so without further ado, enjoy the video. We're gonna start the bag by making the straps. I use double-sided tape along the center fold the long raw edges in, and then top stitch along all sides. Okay, I realized I haven't done a crossbody strap only tutorial, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that really quick. Um, so I've got my um, fabric cut here for a one inch crossbody strap. So it's four inches wide. And this is the width of the fabric, so about 60 inches long. Um, if your fabric isn't long enough, you could also um, kind of splice it together to make it as long as you need it. Um, so what I've done is interfaced it with woven fuse, just one layer. Um, I kind of frank-infused it here 
just so I didn't have to cut a whole scrap. It's not gonna be an issue. Um, I left about an inch of each end uninterfaced so that I could fold it under. So that way when we're putting our strap together, there are no raw edges. And then I first ironed it in half, lining up the long raw edges, so all the way across the um, length of the fabric. And then you can open it up and you'll see you've got a center crease. And then you're gonna fold your long raw edges again in towards the center, all the way down. And then repeat that for the other side. So when you fold your fabric in, it should look like that. And you'll still have this crease. And then once it's all ironed, you'll fold it in half. And then you'll have no raw edges. Um, so really quick, I'm just gonna kind of do that. All right, so I've got all my clips and I'm just gonna, usually if you use a lot of steam with your iron, you shouldn't have to um, think too much about clipping all of it together. Um, I like to look at my fabric and see if there's one I prefer for the top or the underside. So I'll probably go with this for the top. So I'm just gonna kind of clip it together. You can see here, there's not really any raw edges and just line up that folded edge. Folding in that fabric. I'm just kind of taking my finger through the center. Fold that in. Um, you could use double-sided tape if you really needed to. Let's say you couldn't um, fold, let's say you're making one out of vinyl and you can't really iron it, definitely use double-sided tape then. If your fabric is kind of poking out like that, you can just kind of stick it back in there, add a clip to the end. And then you're gonna to top stitch around all four sides of the strap. So all the way, I like to start with my folded edge so nothing shifts. And then you can go onto that edge. This I guess would be the folded in and this is just the folded. So the folded in edge is where I wanna start. And go all the way around the strap. Okay, so now I've got everything completely top stitched. Um, again, this is your bottom or underside and then this will be the top of it. Um, we just need three pieces of hardware. You're gonna need two snap hooks and one slide adjuster. So I've got my snap hooks and my slide adjuster. So the first piece we're gonna use is the slide adjuster. You're going to grab your fabric, um, quote unquote, wrong side up. So this is the side we decided is the wrong side. And there should be like a little weld mark on your slide adjuster. And then you can see where the slide adjuster has been folded under. I like to start there. So, Basically, this is the wrong side of your slide adjuster. So we're gonna slide that through the bar at the bottom and then you're gonna go right over top of that. So there's what you're looking at. If your machine isn't quite strong enough to sew through this, but you have rivets, you could add two rivets, add one rivet. I'm just gonna go ahead and do a quick little box stitch or like two parallel lines. Um, you wanna slide the bar all the way down. You can see how this is up, this is down. I wanna slide it all the way down so you can sew as close to as possible that strap, that center bar. I'm just gonna do a few back stitches. And, um, 
and then I'm reversing through there, turning it and sewing forward. And then sewing forward after I pivot. And then if you really want to make it nice and secure, you can just do like a, a little short diagonal line, making sure you're watching out for your hardware. Okay, so that's, that's not going anywhere. And then trim all your extra little threads. Okay, so wrong side facing up, we're gonna slide it all the way to the end through our fingers so that it's nice and straight. And you're gonna grab one of your snap hooks and then with your snap in your hand or technically the snap facing towards the quote unquote right side of your strap, you're gonna slide it through. Again, nice and straight. Lay it flat and you're gonna loop it around. So I'm folding the fabric over that snap hook and through the top of this bar of the slide adjuster. So over that fabric already. Oh, looks like there's plenty of room. So you should now see the top of your fabric. So we're just gonna slide that through and I like to make it a pretty short loop just so I can make sure that nothing is twisted, nothing's upside down that shouldn't be. So then again, I can see the right side of my fabric here. There's my snap hook. And then you're going to fold your fabric over again. See a little loop. Hard to show, sorry. See that loop? And here's my slider. You're gonna push the bar down and through that other side. So here's where we sewed, here's where we just came through, and here's where we're leaving. And just slide it all the way down so that there's no twists. So right now we should see the top of our slider full of fabric, our snap hook, should be in place and then with the wrong side facing up so i flipped it over you're going to reach the end of your fabric you're going to grab your remaining snap hook and slide it under and you can leave just a little one inch square to sew. You can leave it a little longer and add two rivets, three rivets, whatever you prefer, however you want it to look. I'm gonna fold under like just about an inch or so and then do that same sort of box stitch. Sewing as close to the snap hook as possible. that I can sew diagonally across. And then you can pivot again and sew across the top to get to the other corner. And then lift up your foot and pivot again to sew in the opposite diagonal. And kind of making sure you're back stitching, securing all of those. thread and now you've finished your crossbody strap good job
Okay, so I'm gonna start by working on my lining. Um, I have decided to add a slip pocket. So what I've done is I just cut a few inches off of the lining panel pattern piece. Since I'm using waterproof canvas, I'm just gonna fold over that top edge twice and then top stitch. And then I have these little tags that say made with magic. And because my exterior fabric is a little Disney inspired, I'm gonna go ahead and sew one of these in. How do I wanna do it? I don't wanna do it, I don't even know. I think I'll just put it kind of under the slip pocket. I think that'll be really cute. So I'm just sliding it in there. I'll go ahead and top stitch. I'm using a stitch length of 4.5. Just making sure that's in there. And then since these do have um, kind of that center fold line, I'm just gonna line them up and clip it in place and then baste around the sides. And then if you wanted to, you can use that center line to make it divided or you could add some like pen lines or something like that. Um, I'm just gonna keep it as a large open area, why not? slip pocket. I'll set that aside. And then we're going to work on the zippered pocket, which if you've seen me do, you can skip. I'm going to fold my lining panel in half. I'm going to fold one of my zippered pockets in half in the opposite direction. So this was right side up, this was wrong side. Um, just so when you fold them in half, those fold lines meet up. So I'm going to make a seven inch zippered pocket. I'm using my little zipper template. This is from um, by Piera through topsandbobbins.com. And I believe our coupon code is so whatever um, for a little, little discount. Um, you wanna keep in mind that this bag gets kind of folded over. So I'm gonna line up with the bottom and my pocket is about three and a half inches from the top. That's where it'll start. So that should be good. And I'm sewing across the top. make sure they're fairly parallel and then we're just going to cut that open. very gently press that. I'm going to use lots of steam um, because you do not want to melt the waterproof canvas. While I'm over here, I'm also going to iron my zipper so that it's nice and straight. There's no waves or anything. So I definitely, I don't press for any longer than like two seconds. So I've got my zipper, 
This is a seven inch zipper for my seven inch zipper pocket so I don't have to worry about it being too big or too small. It's just right. So I'm gonna start at the front of the zipper, add some back stitch, and then I just kind of eyeball it to make sure that this is an even amount of zipper tape showing. Backstitch at the corners. Make sure that your zipper pocket fabric is laying flat. And I just kind of like to hold on to the zipper pull as I'm sewing. Just kind of make sure it's all nice and even. And I'm kind of pushing and holding things down with my fingertips. So as I'm getting close to that zipper pull, I'm just gonna unzip it, lift up your foot, and then go around that corner. Um, be careful if your little metal zipper stops are pretty close. I feel like mine might be. I just kind of slowly walk, like hand crank your needle over it so you don't hit it. And then do some back stitching. I like to come around at the top corner and just make sure that's all nice and stabilized. And then use my little thread zap to trim it all away so it won't start to fray. <laughs> and you can see here where my zipper start and stop is, but I sewed over it so it's good. And I didn't break a needle, yay! So we're gonna flip this over, put your fabrics right sides together. And then I like to clip from the other direction. And then I'll fold it over so I can see my actual zipper. Kind of unzip it halfway. And then just fold your main lining panels and then you can sew through your zipper pocket while it's nice and flat. Back stitch. Um, I have to reread the directions for this bag, so I can't recall if I need to leave, leave the pocket open, but I'm sure that I do, so I'm going to. I'll just unzip my zipper all the way, trim my excess fabric down, throw it on the ground, whatever, it's fine. And then I fold this edge up for later birthing. Okay, so instead of adding strap anchors, what I'm gonna do is Um, sorry, I'm just like making sure it's recording. Yeah, okay. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my template piece to mark out where I should put these strap anchors. Um, so it says two and a half from the top and 2.75 from the center. But I can kind of lay this in there and mark it out. How about that? Yeah, I like that. So I'm laying my template piece on there, kind of matching it up. Just laying this over top. You could put it underneath, but it works so well. Just kind of mark out those parallel lines. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside, work on these two. Then I'm not sure if I have talked about interfacing yet or not. 
I am using um, a cotton woven that I sell through my website. Um, not sure if it's available while this video is being watched by you. By the way, I hope you're having a super day. Um, but I have interfaced it with woven fuse and then Decoville light and then foam. Only because I want to make sure it's really sturdy. Not that it's like really thin, but I just, I like the way it feels. Don't judge me. I won't judge you. It's fine. Okay, so I'm just marking out all four where these need to go. I'm going to set my pattern piece aside and use my seam ripper to mark those holes. And then I'm going to take my strap anchor, just kind of make sure that those prongs are nice and evenly bent and slide it through. And then I like to do it with the pointed side at the bottom, but hey, it's your project. You can do it however you'd like. And then I fold them in like they're hugging that washer. And you could add a little bit of glue here if you wanted to as well. So again, I'm just like evenly bending them. The bottom of the triangle is, you know, at the bottom. Might help if I rip these open, huh? Did do Okay. And then just slide them through. So this is a lot quicker then cutting out those little tabs and folding over and using your tape. Um, it is a different look, so I'm not discrediting the way those connectors look, but I will say that the connectors for this bag um, that are in the written pattern are not the sturdiest. Um, I really do love them, but I've had issues, and it could of course be me the way I sewed them, but they didn't come down long enough underneath the little shovel part, the little spade part. Um, so I did lengthen mine. And it helped. Okay. so cute and then I will add my nameplate here There are my connectors on there, and then I'm going to add my nameplate to this side. So I'll go ahead and do that really quick.
um, are the flap that goes over your zipper and then your um, crossbody strap connectors that like sneak into the side panel. So I'm gonna use double-sided tape along the shortest edge of your zipper flappy do. I have added a little bit of Decaville light scraps just because I wanna make sure it's nice and sturdy. I think the glitter vinyl on its own would have been fine, but you know, it's just laying around. So why not? Okay, I'm gonna fold that over. And then this is just gonna get folded in half. And then you're gonna top stitch along all four sides. You could leave the bottom side unsewn, but I mean, it's really gonna be fine to sew it. Using a stitch length of 4.5, back stitch, pivot at the corner. So proud of this. Pivot, sew along the side, and then I'm just going to sew all the way across the bottom. Because it couldn't hurt, right? Couldn't hurt. Trim all those little excess threads. And then I'm going to fold it in half really quick and just make a tiny little snip or mark in the center. Okay, and then I'm gonna set it aside. And then we'll grab our double-sided tape um, I went ahead and cut my piece to an inch and a half by six. And then for some reason my video cut out, stupid remote. Um, then I folded the long raw edges in towards the center and sewed down both sides, cut it in half, and then slid my D-rings inside. And then I'm just setting them aside into this little hardware container for later use. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and prep the zipper. Uh, you need a 16 inch zipper from start to stop. So if you're using zipper tape, I would say you could cut it to about 17 and a half inches and you would be safe. Um, we've got our two zipper ends. There are two different pattern pieces depending on the width of your zipper. So make sure you take note of that. So I'm just gonna tape down the center. And I did think about leaving these off and maybe just adding um, like a zipper end to each side, but the more I thought about it, the more the shape of this bag and the security really does kind of depend on this zipper tab thingy ma bobber. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold the sides in and then fold up this little leftover side rectangle. Um, ideally, they should all meet up. <laughs> I'm just not the greatest at that. Um, and then you fold it in half and it attaches to your zipper, but you first have to add the magnetic snap. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I'm going to mark out where I want to put the snap with a little dot and then set this aside. So go ahead and do the same with this one. Um, it'd probably be smart to fold in 
see the center? Like, mark out your center. Let's see if I can... No, that doesn't seem... No, that won't be right. Okay. I'm just going to fold into what looks like the center. Even though I should have marked it out. And then fold that up. Hey, that one looks way better. <laughs> All right, fold up. Just kind of marking the center of half. And then for this side, we're going to put the male side, so the thinner part of the snap. So I'm lining up the center of the washer with the center of the marking. Slicing that open. Um, I am using 18 millimeter snaps. The pattern doesn't really say what size to use. Um, so I definitely wouldn't use anything wider than 18. 14 would probably be ideal, even though it's pretty tiny. Um, so there's that added. And if you're using a woven fabric to do this with, you're definitely gonna wanna make sure you interface, especially that side, pretty well. So that the snap lasts a long time. All right, folding that back over. And then we can sew it to the ends of our zipper. I'm gonna kind of fold the ends of my zipper in a little bit so they're not poking out too much. And then kind of line up that metal snop, snop, the metal stop. Um, I could have used double-sided tape here, but I'm just gonna clip it. And then your snap is gonna be pointing towards the bottom and then it's going to be just, just the solid fabric at the top of your zipper. And then just go really slow around the edge, make sure you're not hitting your hardware. Trim down those extra threads. And there's what that looks like. So again, just lining this up. I'm gonna fold the ends of my zipper uh, in. Oh, wrong way. There we go. like tucking the ends of your zipper in and then like good night good night little zipper ends Starting where my zipper actually is attached to those ends because otherwise your zipper could kind of slip out while you're sewing the rest of it. So I've caught my zipper in and then I can sew around the other edges. Trim 
down the excess thread. And then um, your zipper panel is pretty much ready to go. And uh, this looks like Christmas. <laughs> So now comes a really fun part of this bag. Uh, we're gonna take our main panels and we're gonna fold them over half an inch. And the first time I made this bag, I was like, oh, I'll just go ahead and tape it. Don't tape it, do yourself a favor, don't tape it. And this is kind of why I've used that Decaville just so I've got a very clear line. Okay, so that's folded over. And then on one of the sides, you're going to add your zipper cover and your zipper. So I'm just gonna, um, hmm, what do I do first? The zipper cover, yeah. So I'm not gonna sew past my zipper cover, I'm just gonna really quick. So this is gonna cover where your zipper goes and like flap over it. Which is why I call it, you know, just the zipper flappy do. <laughs> I'm gonna fold my actual zipper in half and instead of snipping this, oh, I bet I could just thread zap and then I won't fray. <laughs> All right, so I'm just taking my thread zap and slicing through that, but it won't fray and I've got this clear mark of my center. So this should go face down over top. And we're gonna do the same thing with the lining as we did with the exterior. We're going to fold the side edges in in about half an inch. And you don't have to go all the way down, it's just a few inches. Okay, and then I'm gonna lay that over top. And you really wanna make sure that you line up those side panels. It is very important. <laughs> So I'm adding a clip there, clip this together. It does help to baste your zipper in place if you are not good at keeping your zippers where they should be. And see how those edges line up? That's, that's a good sign. I like that. So I'm gonna clip that all together. And then we're gonna sew from end to end, stitch length at four. And then our seam allowance is just kind of following the edge of the foot, so about a quarter of an inch. Just do a little back stitch, not on the zipper, but uh, at the panel. I'm gonna sew down, kind of holding everything together. It's a lot of layers and you don't want anything to get shifted around. My zipper is um, now face down, so I can't see the teeth, just in case you weren't sure what was happening there. So I'm gonna trim all of my extra little threads. I'm gonna switch my stitch length over to about a five. I'm gonna fold these panels out of the way. So you're gonna fold your lining out of the way. Your little zipper tab is gonna be facing up. I'm gonna give everything a little bit of a tug. I wanna make sure I caught everything very well. Check your seam that vinyl in place. Okay, good. 
So lining is gonna get folded down. I can see my zipper. And you're going to top stitch across, you know, the top. Stitch length set to five. Back stitch. Keeping about an eighth of an inch from the top edge. And I don't like to go too far past um, about a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch from the outer edge. This is just going to help us later when we're top stitching to kind of line everything up nice and neat. So. So then we can just repeat those steps for the other side. So I'm just gonna set that aside for now. I've got my lining here, I'm gonna fold in half, or not in half, but I'm gonna fold that side edge in about an eighth of an inch. Not an eighth, oh my gosh, can I speak? I am going to fold the sides under half an inch. <laughs> yes, that is exactly what I meant to say. Great job, Lauren. Okay. Again, that foam is kind of helping me know where half an inch is. Um, and then this bag for the first time can be pretty complicated. So if you get a little discouraged, you're getting confused. It's okay. I remember the first time I made this, I was like, what? I'm sorry, what? Excuse me. I don't, I'm still not getting it. So if it takes a minute, that's okay. All right. So now we're going to attach the other side. Um, I'm thinking maybe I should have done that first because it's flappy do, but it's okay. So I'm lining up the center nicely. Yep. I'll probably baste this. It's too many things that could shift. Making sure that my sides are well matched. And that your fabric is folded over. going to really quick baste this. So when I'm basting it, I'm sewing an eighth of an inch from the top of my zipper. And then you want to make sure that your zipper doesn't wobble in any way. Make sure your lining stays, your exterior stays folded. Trim your excess threads. Oh, I also realized we do not need to leave this open, like at all. So I'll go ahead and close that up. That's my bad. Sorry guys. I'm a professional, I swear. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and add our lining. So right now our exterior, our, me, our, the exteriors of our bag are faced right sides together. And then we're gonna put the linings right sides together lining up that folded edge, clipping it all together. You can kind of make sure your centers are lined up nicely. And you really don't want your lining fabric poking out further than the exterior or anything. You wanna make sure they're, they're nicely lined up. If anything, maybe you can see a little more of your exterior, but other than that, nothing too major. And then you're going to sew it at a quarter of an inch now. And we've got that zipper basted in place so we don't need to worry about it shifting. You just need to make sure your lining stays where you want it. Okay, 
So then you'll pull your lining and your exterior away from their partnered side and you'll top stitch that. And like I said, make sure you give them a nice little tug so it's a good top stitch. About an eighth of an inch from the edge on all sides. So now we're ready to attach our bottom panel and purse feet and then the side panels and top stitching. I mean, it's a fairly straightforward bag. Okay, so for purse feet, I'm gonna grab my washers. One, two, three, four, five. Five purse feet. And then I'm going to mark on my Decaville Heavy, an inch from all sides. And then in the center, which is three. I'm gonna use my Tula Pink Seam Ripper is basically just a dull scalpel at this point and slice those holes and then from the right side of our fabric we'll just slide in those purse feet making sure that the prongs are going the same direction as the slice you've made so you don't want to put it in perpendicular you just want to go in nice and And then from the other side, I like to just give it a little twist or a purple nurple, some might call it. And that just helps it stay nice and tight. And then slide your washers on. And then press your prongs down. You can add a little bit of glue here if you want to now. You could add um, another layer of Decaville Heavy if you wanted to, whatever, float your boat. So now you can kind of unclip the bottom edge of your fabric where you folded it over. Lay your bottom panel over top of that. Clip it. sure there's nothing else on the table. My stitch length I'm going down to a 4 or 4.5 if you wanted to. And you're just going to sew half an inch right next to but not through the interfacing. A little back stitch. And then I don't know if this is in the pattern but I'm going to switch my stitch length to a 5 and I'm going to top stitch it. So I'm folding it down, leaving my seam allowance pointing out like that. And then I'm gonna repeat with the other side. So unclip it a little bit. Line that up. Um, I don't know if I spoke in the beginning about how I have changed this pattern, but I actually made myself a bag, switching my stitch length back, um, and I added two inches to the bottom, so I just kind of elongated it, and then instead of like adding the zipper and the clips and whatnot, I just left it standing up so it doesn't fold over and pinch down. It was a really cool shape because, I mean, essentially you're just um, using the same method of putting it together. It's, 
it was really fun. So I'm unzipping my zipper. You kind of have to move the little flappy do out of the way. I'm moving my needle inside my zipper. I'm flattening my seam allowance in towards the other side. Switching my stitch length to a five. Back stitch. And it's hard to use these. Um, the only thing I don't like about these connectors is the way the noise sounds. It sounds like I'm running out of bobbin, so I'm always like on high alert. Like, am I out? Am I running out? What's what's going on? Um, so then we're just gonna repeat those steps for the lining bottom panel. Okay. So my lining is clipped. I'm gonna use a slightly longer stitch seam allowance. Make sure everything is well, uh, well, sure, why not? I just went ahead and sewed my pocket into that lining. It's not gonna matter. We wanted it closed anyway. I've caught everything, so it's sealed up. And then if you want to top stitch inside your bag, you can. Um, top stitching that other side is gonna be a little bit complicated. Um, but not impossible. So I'll go ahead and top stitch. I think that using like a contrasting color to top stitch really gives your bag like a pop. It's really fun. Okay, again, lining up that edge. A little bit longer of a seam allowance. Aha. I knew we were running out soon. I'd ru much rather run out on the lining than the exterior though. All right, so now I know I've got a full bobbin. So when I go to top stitch and put this together, we should be good. Again, this part's gonna be a little bit complicated. You're not gonna be able to see what I'm doing, but I am moving my needle inside the zipper. So hopefully you can see there's the zipper tab. I'm folding the um, seam allowance toward the bottom. Getting that lined up on the edge, stitch length of five. And I'm just gonna I've stitched that down. And the hard part is getting back out. So just kind of wrestle with it. Come on now. Oh, okay, come on. There we go. Trim my extra little threads. I might have lost some clips along the way, huh? So what you're left with is a lining and an exterior. You should still have most of your sides clipped, kind of at half an inch. Some things may have come undone. They've come undone. All right. Yeah, 
So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna grab our four remaining pieces. We've got two lining, two exterior. And then we have our um, crossbody strap connectors. So we'll get that all going. Okay, so I'm going to grab some double-sided tape and fold the top of this under half an inch. So I'm using my half inch double-sided tape from wayback.com, links down below. And we will repeat this with the exterior too. If your machine is definitely not good with double-sided tape, I would probably recommend against using it. <laughs> And then I'm going to fold it in half and snip the bottom center. Groovy. And let me do it again. Tape. I think the pattern calls for a little bit of fleece on this side or something, but I don't need it with vinyl. I think I've used it before. If you really want your side panel to have some good stability, I would go ahead and just add a little bit of Decaville Light or 809 or maybe two layers of SF101 to your lining something like that. I do have to add magnetic snaps. So I'm going to get my iron ready. I'm gonna heat up the Decaville light by placing the soft side without glue kind of on it using my nails, don't burn your fingers. And then once it's heated up, I'm just gonna set it on the panel so that I'm not directly ironing it and we'll add our snaps. Okay, so I've got my snap placement marked out according to the pattern. I added a little bit of the Decaville light and we'll go ahead and add our remaining snap piece. And our D-rings. Where did I put my snaps? Where'd they go? Where are you? Oh, my shroud in a drawer. Okay, please hold. Can't find them. Oh, there they are. <laughs> They're literally like attached to these clips. What is happening? Okay. Snap placement. plastic coating of the snap, poking it through, add the washer, and then I don't know if I'm ever really sure which way the prongs of a snap are supposed to go. Should they like hug it or I don't know. 
And then one inch from each side, you're going to sew in that D ring. And you're not going to do opposite sides. You'll just do the same one. Because then when they're attached to the bag, they'll be on opposite sides. And then I like to add a rivet um, again after I sew it all together. So again, one inch from the edge. So I already have my centers marked out on the exterior, so we can go ahead and set these three pieces aside and just focus on one at a time. So I'm going to start by folding my bottom panel in half, snipping the center. I'm going to line up the center of this piece with it and then add a few clips along the bottom. We will probably be using the stapler along the curve just so things don't start to shift. And then I think it's like two inches from the top edge that this gets lined up. Let's see though. You can sort of unclip your exterior fabric this part can get confusing, but I promise to help you through it. Let me see here. Is it two inches? <laughs> yeah, so two inches from the top is where you're going to keep it folded. So I like to just kind of give myself a tiny little marking Unfold it at the two inch mark, you will line up your piece. So here's my two inch mark, and then there's where the top edge of this folded one goes. So I'm gonna do that again to this side. So kind of unfold it at that two inch mark and clip. And then you're just gonna work that corner curve into the bag. Like slow pinching methods. So there is that. The side panel is attached. And we're gonna sew around that edge. I'm just gonna staple at those curves really quick because I already know things could shift. I'll get upset, we'll cry. I'll throw it against a wall. It's fine. And then I may as well staple at the bottom too. And when I'm stapling, I'm only going like an eighth of an inch from the edge. You don't want to go too close. I'm going to set my stitch length to four and let's get started. I am starting at the top 
of this folded vinyl section. Half an inch, back stitch, and then go forward. And then really slowly around those edges. Make sure you don't hurt your fingers on those staples. And make sure you're sewing far enough away from the staples too. And I had things shift up here, which is why it's good to mark out those two inches. Okay, and then we're getting closer to the top. Make sure things are nice and straight. And then back stitch, and I am just leaving the tiniest bit, like an eighth of an inch, from the top folded edge of the vinyl panel. So just this little bit. And then just kind of double check from the other side, nothing's too puckered. And then I'm trimming my seam allowance along the bottom. Cutting out those staples. And then I'm gonna do the lining and then I'll do kind of a fast forward version of the other sides. So for this lining, we're gonna measure the two inches from the top. So you can use a snip if you have to as well. I'm just gonna use this really crappy blue marking pencil. There we go. All right, we've got our lining piece that's folded over. Unclip it. Line it up with the blue. Lining up the centers. Oh, I never marked out the center. My bad. that curve until it fits. All right, stitch length set to four. We're gonna start about an eighth of an inch from the top edge that's folded of the lining. And we're doing a little bit bigger of a seam allowance than half an inch, just by a little, so it's a nice snug fit. You can staple the lining if you need to. I feel okay. Just kind of slowly work around those curves. stop again eighth an inch from that top folded edge we're going to trim down the seam allowance very gently and then as i'm trimming that i am tapering as i get to the top 
because I don't want to trim that down too much and then I can't top stitch it. So we're going to repeat those steps for the other exterior and lining and then we'll turn it and top stitch it. We're in the home stretch guys. Okay, side panels are attached, seam allowances are trimmed, spare threads also trimmed, and now we are going to, I'm just going to remove all my clips because I know they're going to pop off anyway. We've got this interesting bit of space in between on the sides. This is where you're going to turn the bag through. Um, if you're using really thick fabrics and you feel like it's difficult, you could use the turn pocket or you could leave a hole open in the lining and kind of stitch it up, but we should be okay. So I'm grabbing the furthest um, little exterior piece. I'm just turning it through. Um, might have been easier to grab the lining first. I don't know, it just kind of vomits itself out, as gross as that sounds, but really slow it's a it's a weird balance you have to find to turn the bag you don't want to wrinkle anything for too long but you want to go slow enough that you don't rip anything so just kind of get part out and then you can pull there we go and now that lining can just follow suit this is where you really get to test the strength of your bag too all right, so we're gonna push everything out nicely. Make sure nothing is too severely wrinkled. Luckily, you can um, kind of steam that out. So you're gonna push your lining into your bag. Kind of line up those corners, flatten everything out. And then all that's left to do is sew up your lining and top stitch. So what we're going to do is we're going to line up those corners and clip. You can absolutely use double sided tape or like glue to help you hold this, um, but we should be good. Your seams are going to point inside or towards the center of your bag. That is a weird thing to try and maneuver, but once you've made the bag a couple times, you kind of get it. And we'll clip that closed. I just, I love the way this bag is made. It's so fascinating. And this method can be used on so many different things. Like you could, again, like I said, just play with the measurements and figure out what you like. Make sure your sides are folded in, no raw edges, no little stray threads. Just clipping that all together. Make sure your hardware is pointing up. Okay. So you can see our slip pocket here. Probably could have been okay if we divided it. I just didn't want to. And then this will get folded down and you can clip your zipper. 
on the side. So then it's like this neat little barrel shape. And then we'll add our straps, of course. So super fun. Let's get ready to top stitch it. Oh, I just love it. It's so neat. So unzipping it, unclipping it, this isn't going to help you. Um, we're going to, I think it's easiest, you could flip your bag out again so that, um, you know, your exterior and your lining, whatnot, but I kind of feel like it's easier to sew from the lining side only because you want to see a little bit of your exterior from the lining. So I'm gonna start at this top corner. If you are doing this, make sure that your bobbin thread is the same color as your top stitch. I am starting kind of where I stopped my top stitch at the zipper. I'm just slowly going around. And then when you get to the bottom, you're gonna leave your needle in and pivot. And just kind of check from the outside that you're catching everything nicely. through your strap connector. And then I'm at that corner. I'm checking from the outside that I've caught everything. Just gonna do a little back stitch to secure. And then we're going up that side and I'm meeting where I started top stitching my zipper. And you could even kind of trail it off a little more. You could add two rows of top stitching to your zipper and then it's all just like a cohesive um, stitch, like a normal bag, a top stitch. Um, but that's totally your call. Just kind of thread zapping everything. Check from the outside that you caught everything as well. So there's this little part here that I got off as far as top stitching, kind of messed up. So I'll do it from the top on this side. But that's okay because you could kind of hide it by adding a second row of top stitching along the bottom and your, your excuse is basically that you're reinforcing this. So I'll just go ahead and do that. It really is easier to sew it from the line. But for the next side, I'll like flip it out and see if that helps as well. Okay, so I'm going to do a second line of stitch. I have to make another one of these today. fun to just refresh myself especially since I'm really really heavily modifying the other one it's gonna be fun I might do it live I haven't decided okay other side all right I'm gonna try I'm gonna try kind of turning it the other way I just feel like it's not gonna sit as well this, this might work. Okay, this might work. So I've just kind of pushed it out. I'm gonna start where my last top stitch ended. Okay, 
this isn't too bad. Okay, so now at this point you're supposed to add um, like a little stitching. You're supposed to bring in your side panels and kind of tack it. Um, I would say skip it if you can, maybe add a rivet. Um, I mean it does help your sides stay in better, but it the stitching is going to come out eventually. I don't, I don't know what else to tell you. So I'm just going to leave this as is, I think it's fine. And we'll get these handles attached and our crossbody and I mean that's it guys. Alright so for the strap ends of this bag I'm going to go ahead and use um, screw on strap connectors. So, so I'll show you guys. I will show you guys how those work. So I've got four of these pieces and I've got eight screws. So I'm going to figure out which one's the front, which one's the back. You're going to slide the strap end on. You can use a little bit of glue here if you want to. I think it's okay without, especially since we'll be adding these screws. So I've got my electric screwdriver. I'm just taking one screw off my magnet at a time. We're trying to anyway, come on, get on here. If you're using these with leather, you may need to pre-punch your holes, just because that'll be quite difficult. All right, so I'm getting the screw on there. I apologize if my nails look kind of gross. Um, this nail polish looks cool in the light, but otherwise it looks like old cheese on my fingers. <laughs> I assure you I don't have old cheese on my fingers. So that's pretty much what the strap end is, and we're just going to do that four times. I like to make sure that the ends of your strap match up, so make sure that that like, textured side is all going in the same direction. And then you want your screw to be going in nice and straight as well. And when I'm turning my hand, I don't know if it helps or hurts, but I feel like it's kind of like walking up an escalator. Like, yes, I'm doing a faster method, and then I'm doing this to make it go even faster. Maybe not, though. And again, we're just making sure lays nice and straight, sliding it through that anchor. And I'm just going to clip this in place for now. Um, I did cut my straps to 24 inches. 
Uh, the one, the handles that the pattern comes with are such cute little grab handles, but I really feel like my customer base anyway is gonna want a little bit taller of a handle. So I'll go ahead and get the other straps done and rivet them on. Alright you guys, that is it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we did end up riveting those handles on. Give you a little view of the side here. I did use a different red for the zipper tabs. I thought it might be fun. And then you could add like a tassel or something to this. Um, I think this having two zipper pulls in opposite directions would be really nice as well. So you could open it easily and quickly. I'll show you the bottom. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if you're not already, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.